Okay, so we're talking about rational functions, and they look kind of like this. Those little blue lines that are dotted, those are called something with an A. Asymptote lines. And there's the kind that go up and down, that's vertical. And the kind that go like the horizon, you know, across, those are horizontal. And we've told you how to look at an equation and know where the verticals are and uh, where the horizontals are. Uh, or actually, no, not the horizontals. You don't know that yet. But I'm going to go through this one problem right here that I will do. I want you to pay attention so you can remember so that you can do it yourself in a minute. I am not going to do the horizontals yet. I'm going to show you how to do that today. Domain comes from the D what? Denominator. Good. The denominator. And the denominator here, if I factor it, would be x and x, and then 1's a 3, and 1's a 1, and then it has to be a plus and a minus. There we go. And on the top, I could factor this. You're supposed to be good at factoring, because we just got done with a big test on factoring. And then the 4, uh, <laughs> that's true. doesn't mean necessarily you're good at it, but you should be. And then this is a positive, that's a minus. Okay. Do you see that that cancels? And that creates a hole. And a hole in the graph is at 1 comma something. See, x is 1, because if I put in a 1, it'll create a problem on the denominator. That's what makes this a hole. 1 comma what? Well, then you take the number 1, and you put it in here and here. So you end up with 1 plus 4 is 5, over 1 plus 3 is 4, 5 fourths. 1 comma 5 fourths is where the hole is. Now, that's above and beyond. If you just said x equals 1 for where the hole would be, I'd accept it. But this is what you're going to have to learn how to do in pre-calc and in calc. And it's really not that much harder. You just take the one that you already knew, and you stick it in here and here, and it tells you the other part. The verticals come from the domain, which comes from the denominator. So there, these two things are both things that could be verticals. But the domain is both of those two things, like all real numbers. Remember, domains are a list of the things that would work. And you don't want to list all of the numbers. So you say all real numbers work except x cannot be negative 3 because of that. And x cannot be 1 because of that. So those are the two things. And these two things are either asymptotes or they're holes. Since the blue one that I circled there is a hole, then the other one here, the, no, the, black, the red one, here we go, that one must be the asymptote. And that's the vertical asymptotes. But notice I have completely avoided the horizontals. And I've got a different way that you need to memorize or write down in your notes to figure out the horizontals. This part right here is about to be revealed. Okay. Now, before we do that, though, I want you to do one of the old kind right here, except not the horizontal yet. Don't know how to do them yet. I want you for review to do this problem. The domain is the things in the denominator that would make the thing crash. So you start with all real numbers except what wouldn't work. The verticals come from the denominator, and whatever isn't a vertical must be a hole, or vice versa. If it's a hole, then it can't be a vertical. All right, try those three things, the domain and the verticals and the holes. I'm going to pause while you factor this thing and try that one. All right, I hope you factored it. And you, this one is a divide and conquer kind of factor. So this part, x squared comes out. And what's left? x minus 4. This part, 2 comes out. What's left? x minus 4. These are in common. So they go out to the front, x minus 4. And what's left over here, uh-oh, hold that thought a second. What's left over here, no, change marker colors, here and here is x squared plus 2. Okay, all over x minus 4, x plus 4. Uh. Okay, and then these will cancel and make the whole. So hopefully you put the whole at 4 comma, and then the only question is, where should I put the other part? So where should I put that other part? I take the 4, and I stick it back into this equation, and I get 4 squared is 16 plus 2 is 18. Over 4 plus 4 is 8. Did anybody know enough to put 18 over 8 or reduced 9 over 4? Raise your hand if you were able to go that far. Good job. That's above and beyond. Okay. The vertical asymptotes are the things that come from the bottom that don't make the hole. Because this is a hole. It can't be an asymptote. That is the other thing that's on the bottom. And so x equals negative 4 is the vertical asymptote. 
The domain is all real numbers work except what? All real numbers except x cannot be 4. x cannot be negative 4. Raise your hand if you're comfortable with this stuff. Even if you didn't get perfect, you know what you did wrong, you get this stuff. Okay, good. That's most everybody. So now, how about the red stuff that we've crossed off, the horizontals? The horizontals we have three rules for. You need to write them down. I'll tell you what to write. You don't have to put all the example problems in here. Okay, so we're going to ignore this for now. But you should write Bob, Bot, and Sob. For the horizontal asymptotes, these are the little rules you use. And I'm telling you, these are worth learning because you, learn them, you use them again in pre-calc next year. Same exact rules apply. And you use them again in calculus. When you've got rational functions, which is kind of a big deal, the big kind of function, uh, you got to know these rules. So if it's bigger on the bottom, the answer is y equals 0 plus outside. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. Right, y equals 0 plus outside. It's not always y equals 0. It's y equals 0 plus whatever is on the outside of the function. All right, again, we're just in writing mode right now. Just write down bigger on top, and bigger on top is none. That is as simple as that. If it's a bigger on top than it is on the bottom, then the answer is there's no asymptotes. I'll explain more what these mean in a moment. Just copy them down. You'll need them. Right, there's no horizontal asymptotes. We're just talking about horizontals here. Okay, and the last is same on both, and the same on both kind is where it's the same degree on the top and the bottom, and then it's a rate. I would rather not have you write. I'd rather have you write ratio of leading coefficients. Right now, you just need to write them down. I'll explain them in a moment. That's going to take a while, but I don't want you to be, you know, I. You don't have to write down everything I do for the next five minutes, but you have to write this down, and then I'll help you understand what you were writing. Yes, sir? For the Bob, that is y equals 0 plus outside. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, so you look at each rational function, like these examples here, okay? And you say, is this bigger on bottom or bigger on top or same on both? This is an example of bigger on the bottom because the degree on the bottom is bigger. It's not that the numbers, like the constants here, has nothing to do with those. It just has to do with the degree. This is degree 2 plus degree 1 plus degree 1 makes that's a degree 3, no, 4 on the bottom, and a degree 2 on top because if I multiplied that all out on top, I'd have an x squared in it. So it's degree 4 on the bottom and degree 2 on top makes it bigger on the bottom. The degree here, this one's degree 2, 3, 4 on top, degree 2 on the bottom, so it's bigger on the top. And there will be no asymptotes, no horizontals. And the last one is same on both, and that's where, like, this is x squared, and this is, if I multiplied it out, that would be an x squared also, so that is degree 2, so they're the same on both. And in those scenarios, you take a ratio of the lead coefficients. The lead coefficient here is a 1. The lead coefficient there is a 1. So it would be y equals 1 over 1, or y equals 1. All right, now I'm going to give you some example problems now so you can understand what I'm talking about. Here is a typical problem. You have x plus 2 over x squared minus or plus 9. Okay, is that bigger on top, bigger on bottom, same on both? Bigger on the bottom. So you just look on your little chart, bigger on the bottom is? 0 plus the outside. There is nothing out here, and therefore, it's just 0, y equals 0. Now, how, why do we need that last little part about the plus the outside? Because imagine this. Imagine you have a graph, and then you do this to it. You go like plus 7. Doesn't that take the whole graph and move it up 7? That's why if you, your equation was going to have an asymptote at 0, the whole thing has to move up 7. Okay, so it's 0 plus whatever's out there. All right, next kind. Let's say it's x squared over x to the third. What's that? Bigger on the bottom. What's the answer for Bob's? y equals 0 plus the outside. Is there anything on the outside? So it's just y equals 0. So if you graph this thing, I guarantee you there is an asymptote at x equals 0, or y equals 0, sorry. These are all y equals things for horizontals. All right, so let's say it's... Let's just so that you don't get confused by things canceling. Let's say it's plus 2 like this. 
All right, same on both. What's the deal for SOBs? Yes, they are an SOB to figure out. Uh, they are harder to figure out because you've got to do a ratio. The ratio is y equals, what's the lead coefficient on the top? What's it on the bottom? So it's one third. At one third on the graph, there would be an asymptote. That again looks, these are the kind that look like this. All right. I think you got the idea. So now, let's go back to that problem we did, and we didn't ever do the, the asymptotes on it because you didn't, or the horizontals because you didn't know how. Let's look at this one. What would the horizontals have been? Bob will tell us. Is it bigger on bottom, bigger on top, or same on both? It's bigger on the top. What's the rule for bots? None. So the answer is none. What if this had been bigger on the bottom? Then you'd say? Y equals zero. And what if it had been same on both? You'd do a ratio. In this case, it would be what over what? One over one, which would be one. Y equals one. The last one is called a ratio. And again, if this had been same on both, we'd take a ratio of the lead coefficients. There's a one here, there's a one here. So it's Y equals one over one. Y equals one is the answer. Yes? Yep, if it's a bob, bigger on the bottom. It has to be completely separate from the fraction. So like, if, if I gave you the parent function, you get how the parent function looks like this? And if I move the parent function up three, it's going to be like this. Notice that's not on the top of the fraction, it's outside. So if this had been a bob, which it is, it's bigger on the bottom, because it's degree zero on the top, degree one on the bottom. Then if it's bob, then it's y equals zero plus that because we've got to reflect the whole thing's moved up three, so the asymptote line would go from here at y equals zero, where it would have been, and it would move up to like here because I moved it up three. So the answer is y equals three would be the asymptote. All right. So a typical problem on today's homework looks like this. Let's just do this one last one together. And it brings out the point that you don't always have a hole in your graph. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. You're already going to the Bob thing, that's good. And is, which question is that answering? The, yep, the second one, the horizontal asymptotes. All right, so what are the horizontal asymptotes? If it's really a Bob, what's the answer? Y equals zero, good. So that's the new part you just learned. Now the old part, domain. Domain is, comes from denominator. Can we factor that denominator or not? Yes, we can. We really should then. You do it, finish it, see if you get it right here. I'll tell you the right answer in just a sec. All right, so let's see how you did. The domain was the denominator, and that was this part, x. And there's a 3 and an x, and there's a 5. And which one was positive, the 5 or the 3? The 5. And then on the top, uh, we have a 3 comes out here and an x plus 3. Notice these do not cancel. They have to be identical, so they don't cancel and make a whole. So that leaves domain is all real numbers, except x cannot be 3 and x cannot be negative 5. The as horizontal asymptotes are y equals 0, and that's because it's bigger on the bottom, and Bob is a 0. And the last one, verticals, come from here. Either this one's a vertical. Wait a minute, I should circle this one. Either this one's a vertical or a hole, or this one's a vertical or a hole. And if neither one's a hole, they must both be verticals. So then the answer is x equals 3 is a vertical and x equals negative 5 is a vertical. And there are no holes. There you go. Did I see something wrong? Yes. All right, and I, that's an excellent question. If it has two vertical asymptotes, you will have graphs by the time you're all done that look like this. Two verticals, one horizontal, and then like over here, it might go like this. Over here, it might go like this. And in the middle, a lot of times they'll go like this. Isn't that cool? And it goes through the asymptote, yes. And I know that messes with your head, and we usually don't tell you that until pre-calc. But it's, it's like, yes, in certain circumstances where you have 
certain kinds of rational functions, it can actually go through an asymptote line, which it normally can't. Yes? Nope. Well, I shouldn't say it. nothing's impossible, but for the kind that we're doing right now, you'll, you'll never run into one. I don't see it in pre-calc either. They, they only have, they have lots of situations where there's two or even three vertical asymptotes, but I've never seen a problem with more than one horizontal asymptote. Part of it is because where do you get the horizontal asymptotes from? Those rules, right? And there's never a rule that gives us two answers. Okay, so either that or we'd have to make up a new rule. So it'd have to be a different kind of problem. <laughs> you turn your head sideways and you can have two. Yeah. All right, anyway. Your homework is just like that. You remember the packet I gave you? It's the next page in the packet. You just got to go to the next page and do both sides of that page. I want to start it with you. So take out your packet. We'll do the first problem together. It's 9.7B. Yes, sir, right there. Problem 8A is our first one. And it looks like this. 2X. So why did I write 3? 2x over x minus 3. And they ask me for the horizontal asymptote. Well, Bob, Bob, no, Bob, Bot, or Sob is what is going to answer this question. Which one is this? It's the same on both. Because it's about the degree, not about the numbers, not the coefficients, not the constants. This has degree 1, this is degree 1, so it is same on both. So the answer is a ratio of the lead coefficients. Why? equals, what's the ratio I'm supposed to have? Two. 2 over 1, which is equal to? 2. There you go. Done. That's the first one. Now, the next ones like that are really easy. So let's skip down to 9 D as in donkey. I always liked how Shrek said that. Donkey. 2x squared minus 3x. Okay, so there's my problem. This is 9 D. And the first thing I would do is factor it, but you can't factor the top. Does that stop you? It shouldn't stop you. Just don't factor the top. Factor the bottom. The bottom is where all the best action's happening anyway. We got to get our verticals and our domain and all that stuff from the bottom. So, so I get an x out of there, and what do I have left? 2x minus 3. So then, what are my verticals? What are my horizontals? All that stuff. Okay. The first question is domain. Domain comes from the denominator. This tells me two things would crash my denominator. What's the easy one? Zero. So that's one of your things you write under domain. It's all real numbers except x cannot be zero. And what else can't x be? And be careful. It's 3 over 2. You're right. x cannot be 3 over 2. Now, if you're not able to do that in your head like that, you would set 2x minus 3 equal to 0. 2x equals 3. x equals 3 over 2. And now you've got your answer, 3 over 2. All right. After domain, we've got verticals. The vertical asymptotes come from the bottom, and anything that wasn't a whole is a vertical. And that means these two, since neither one was a whole, they're both verticals. You don't get that part? Make two lines that look like a uh, sideways equal sign, and then just go like this. Okay, um, moving on to horizontal asymptotes. That's bigger on bottom, bigger on top, same on both. What is this? It is same on both. And if it's a sob, you go y equals a ratio. What's the ratio of what to what? Five over. That's a good question. Is it a one or a two? Lead, lead coefficient, 5 over 2. All right, test on this is coming on Wednesday. It's actually a quiz. It's a quiz. It's a quiz on this. So if you can answer the question you just answered right there, that's a typical test question. It's a quiz in the 85% category. It is not like a big clunking test, but it's, you know, probably 15 points or so. And it's your last chance before next year to raise your grade in this class or to lower it. Um, actually, I'm wrong. There's one more. There's one more little quiz. It's only going to be worth about 10 points, but it's on some of the, uh, the
the stuff from the Algebra Ninja packet that we think is the most important. So it would only be fair to tell you which of the parts of the 202 questions, which we thought were the most important for you guys to practice. And they are these. I have got them on this yellow sheet. This is like a little list of things you should know by Thursday. So this quiz for the horizontal asymptotes and everything, that's on Wednesday. This little quiz is on Thursday. And it's all stuff you've already learned. There's nothing new here. Now, if your teacher, though, never taught you about what a box and whisker plot is, then you have to go back and learn it. I have already talked about it once in class, but I also put it on AlgebraNinja.com. All the videos are there. You can learn whatever you need to learn there. Otherwise, you can ask me in class, too. Like in the, over the next few days, if you're working on work time and you're like, how do you do this one? I'll gladly show you. But it's kind of up to you. We're not taking a whole day on this Algebra Ninja stuff. It's supposed to be stuff you learned already. So it's kind of like you kind of need to get working on this yourself. And if you need help, ask. If you can do everything on the yellow sheet, you'll be fine on the test. Basically, it's going to be the same kind of things except reworded. Okay. The, le the test on the yellow sheet is on Thursday. iPads are not going to happen until January, but uh, it'll probably be... Did you hear this is January 6th? Okay. The latest rumor is January 6th. So basically, it's probably going to be a couple days, a couple weeks before the end of the semester. And then I will lose a lot of you. I looked at my, my schedule, and uh, this class is like completely different next semester. I'm losing a lot of you, but you'll take your iPad to whatever class you go to.